Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Death Race Movie Thoughts. So the death races are rigged, and they are desperately trying to avoid Frankenstein winning that fifth race. Because I guess it would be too much of a hassle to, you know, say, oh, yeah, it's not enough to win five races, you have to win ten races. Why did they set it at five races anyway? Why didn't they just set it, you know, like, really high or something? It just seems really convoluted to have to frame someone and then kill them. How many prisoners are they going to go through, you know? How many different people are they going to find to keep from winning that fifth and final race? Just to make sure, you know, what if, what if Tyrese won a couple more, you know, and then, well, you know, if he's not the fan favorite, I guess it's fine to just, for him to disappear, but, yeah. What if there got to be more fan favorites? What if they couldn't eventually fake them? It just, it's a ridiculous amount of effort to put into it. You know, the people watching will probably just deal with it, you know, if they could be put off by that little... <laughs> they're not that faithful of a viewing audience anyway. So... I don't know if it was the cut I watched, but... We don't actually see what it is they saw on that tape. I'm guessing that it was that the wall was thin or something, or that, or at least that it led directly to the bridge. And let's talk about the bridge. They didn't at all think about how easy of an escape route that would be. They're racing cars, and they have a straight bridge leading out of there with a fence to stop people. Sure, they've got 50 caliber, you know, machine guns, but so do the other cars. You've armored these cars to be able to withstand this kind of, you know, onslaught of fire, and that's the onslaught of fire you have to... And then, you know, again, with the attack choppers, they also just shoot with machine guns. Oh, eventually they do realize, hey, we have missiles to use, you know, and yeah. And obviously, the smart thing to do is to just have, you know, the chick race there at the end so that she can be released because, hey, she's already got the release papers. Why wouldn't you trust Hennessy, a woman who has tricked and, you know, is masterminding this convoluted scheme to ensure that no one leaves the prison? Why wouldn't you trust her to let you leave the prison? You know, she framed an innocent guy just to be able to, I don't know, avoid changing the rules, I guess. And, you know, let's talk about Tyrese, and, you know, for a while, I, I suppose I should have realized it, but for a while I really didn't realize that he was supposed to be one of the <sighs> appealing ones, I guess. You know, it's never even made clear if he's gay or not. I don't personally really care, but I just don't, I don't see a reason to bring it up if you're not going to answer it. You know, it's like with that other guy who was, you know, ready for parole, and it's like, what are you in for? Oh, a bunch of stuff. So what about you, character that we already know why you're in here? Anyway, yeah, Tyrese, not too, you know, concerned with just killing people. I mean, sure, he's letting his, you know, the, the people, you know, the, the navigators die, but he flat out kills one of them for thinking that the, you know, the armor, no, the, the weapon thing was lit. It's not like you lost time. It's not like he steered you in the wrong direction or the, down the wrong road or did I miss something? And he just tosses him out of the car and he dies. You know, 
and then we're introduced to a new one, and he dies, too. So what was the point of that? You know, you could cut out, you know, the switching of navigators completely, and it would alter nothing in the final product of the film. You know, and then you have this huge, what's it called, the... Don't remember what it's called, but the huge thing, you know, with several guns on it, and it's supposed to, you know, cause havoc in the death race arena. So, Paul, did you just get bored with making a race movie? You know, it's not like what what it wasn't interesting enough that these, you know, people were trying to kill each other using cars with high tech weaponry, and all of them had armor, napalm, oil. That wasn't interesting enough. And he just throws the thing in, which has been built up for, you know, forever. It's been built up since practically the start of the movie. And basically what we're left with is, I don't know, five, ten minutes of screen time for this thing. It knocks out a bunch of cars, which weren't important anyway. We do get the funny line from Robin Shao with how, you know, the other times you see him talk, he speaks in Japanese and it's translated into English. This one time, he speaks in English and it's translated into Japanese with the subtitles. That was kind of funny. But yeah, he just knocks out all the other cars, you know. Okay, we're bored with that now, I guess. You know, it's like in the zombie movies, which aren't really zombie movies, which he also did, with just, eh, I don't really feel like having them defeat zombies now. Let's have them fight SWAT members or something else for a little while. Dude, pick a movie, stick with it, at least until the end of that movie. I guess, I guess we should be you know, grateful that at least Mila Jovovich isn't in this, on the other hand. But yeah, you know, you have all these races, and also just, they spend, you know, that's the closest thing we get to actual character development, is when we're introduced to the other drivers, and at the end, only two of them are important, Tyrese and Statham, you know. I couldn't even tell you how half of these other drivers died. I guess a bunch of them died with the huge thing at the end. Two of them die right after the race starts. So what is the point of even having them introduced, you know, if that's all it's going to be? You know, one of them, he climbs out of his car and that's, you know, when they, what they see later when they look back and, and a car hits him in the side, in his side, and his head explodes spontaneously. I guess he had some kind of, you know, congenital birth defect or something that made his head extremely fragile and, you know, it made it explode by something hitting him in the side. You know, not that he would just, you know, turn into a ragdoll, but no, his head explodes. And, you know, the other driver dies not soon after, not long after from, again, nothing. Oh, but we do have, you know, the guy, the, I don't even remember his name, the Russian sounding name guy who was apparently a neo-Nazi even though he had a Russian kind of name, Bashenko something. I realize that it's supposed to be satisfying that Statham kills him, but he just grabs him and, you know, breaks his neck and that's it. There, there's no... You know, they don't have a big extended fight. Again, you know, it's it's Paul trying to go against the Hollywood stereotype. Oh, of course they're going to have a fight. Oh, no, he's just going to break his neck. How uninteresting. There's a reason these things are stereotypes, Paul. There, there really is. It's because people like seeing this kind of thing. You know, it worked for a long time and then people realized, hey, we're seeing it in a lot of movies. I guess that makes it a cliché. Yeah, it can be kind of annoying when we see clichés over and over, but just by going against the cliché, you're not necessarily, you know, there's a reason there usually is a fight before the big bad guy dies. And, you know, then you have the fact that it wasn't even, you know, it's relatively close to the end. I guess it's, we are at that point, the final third of the film, I think. But, yeah, it's not the big climactic death, you know, actually the big climactic death is apparently these grease monkeys know explosives, so, you know, they can make this bomb work for them and this guy who could have gotten parole and didn't really seem, you know, we hadn't seen him kill anyone, we hadn't even seen him really, 
you know, be... But, yeah, he's in this movie, he's in a Paul W. Sanderson movie, too, so he must be a hard-ass. He must just be really cool and, you know, be willing to kill two people. I guess they don't have a screening process for, you know, checking if any of the greetings that they get are, you know, dangerous. Because, in, you know, 2012 and onwards, I'm sure there won't be any more, you know, attacks on... She's a prison official. She is literally... There, there are tons of people who hate her. It didn't even have to be from inside the jail. It could have just been, you know, a family member of someone she framed, or even not that, just, you know, a family member of someone put in her jail who might have even deserved it, heck, you know. But, of course, they, you know, and they obviously get to, you know, mess around with their own weapons as well. I'm not saying that that didn't happen in the movie. That did happen in the movie. It's illogical, is what I'm saying. Why don't they just have the police, you know, fix up these guns instead of... Yeah. And, obviously, they weren't gonna... The Grease Monkeys weren't gonna spot this huge frickin' block of a C4 explosive or whatever the crap it was smack in the middle of the... You know, what they should have done, and this is so obvious, I shouldn't even have to say it out loud, is they should have planted that thing, like, a moment before the car drove off. Like, you know, force it into a lockdown, and just plant it, and then the car should have run off or something. But, yeah. Yeah, obviously, that's not what we're gonna do. And, you know, they don't think that by arming these cars with rockets, and by not having walls thicker than being able to withstand these rockets, that people might try to run out on, the, you know, just rush out, blow a hole, rush out. You know, what was going to prevent them from that? And, you know, presumably all of the police in those cars, you know, he, he dumps his tank, his, you know, gas tank, and it blows all the cop cars away. I'm sure all of those cops were corrupt. They, each and every last one of them, deserved it. None of them had families. None of them had children of their own to go home to, you know. I love the scene where they're talking about how, you know, this is going to be her new father. This is going to be her new mother. Okay, so what? Are they Are they good parents? Are, are you saying they're going to beat her? What? 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 Oh, what is the tension here? Is it just, you know, this the frail male ego of, well, it's, you know, half her DNA is mine, so she belongs to me. I, I have to raise her, even though I, you know, beat up riot cops and hang out with ex-criminals after I've gotten out of prison. You know, he doesn't even seem to mind that Tyrese killed people for no good reason, you know, and, yeah, hangs out with the girl who was already supposed to be able to leave. Why did she stay if she was allowed to leave? You know, they just throw that in there. Oh, wait, you know what? We have 20 minutes of movie left. I should probably tell you I can leave this prison any time. I, t t funny story. You're not going to hear it in this movie, but yeah, I can leave the prison any time, so sh should I pretend to be you so that, you know, and the mask gets one final use, you know. The... There must be other things to talk about in the movie. I love how the wife character is just seen for, you know, two minutes or something, and then never really, you know, she's, like, referred to, but there's never, like, he stops and wonders, oh, I really miss that about you or something. You know, he has no qualms about falling for this new girl who was trying to kill him and, you know, helped kill the previous guy. That's also never really, you know, oh, yeah, I, I rigged them, so, you know, you trust me now? Okay, good. And, you know... I'm not entirely sure why she was in on the thing either, and, you know, the, the my girlfriend actually pointed this following one out to me as we were watching it. She's watched the film before, I don't know how she got through more than one sitting, but anyway, right after it's told that, you know, hardly anyone's gonna know that you're really Frankenstein, or that you, yeah, that Frankenstein's dead, 
and that you're posing as him. He says it to the grease, excuse me, grease monkeys, and it's just like, okay, yeah, don't tell anyone that I'm really Frankenstein, you know, it's just like they're not even paying attention to if, you know, people around might hear, and the rumor might spread, and that whole thing might kind of, you know, get botched. Don't you just love how there is a massive and lasting penalty, you know, g given to him after he, you know, refuses to race, as it seems. You know, there's just, there's no consequence to that. Again, a Paul W. Anderson cliche. You know, and it's actually, it's not a too bad of a moment when he's, you know, threatening, I'm gonna hurl you up into that thing the way we did with the napalm. Yeah, that's not too bad of, you know, an, an idea and, and an interrogation technique. But, yeah, you know, he doesn't, you know, drive the car when the others do. He moves it very slowly. And then, you know, at that other point, he stops the car and he backs it up and all this stuff, you know, to in order to, you know, get revenge on, you know, the Russian guy by just giving him a quick and relatively painless death, you know. He actually, he gets one of the most merciful deaths in the entire film, even though he's, you know, one of the most, as do, you know, Hennessy and Ulrich, you know, very, very easy and very, yeah. One thing I do kind of like is that once the film gets into the jail, it stays there, you know, there is this sense of, you know, until they are breaking out on the other side, that there is this sense of isolation to it, that, you know, you don't know what the outside world looks like, you know, once Statham gets, you know, caught. I'm also guessing that there were, you know, cops all around, you know, completely surrounding the house of Statham and the unnamed wife character. Yeah, she might have had a name, but, you know, she was in the film for two minutes and then forgotten. Since the killer was, you know, willing to return to the prison afterwards, because, you know, I get that he was willing to kill someone. Yeah, that he was willing to kill someone, but why does he return afterwards? Does he just like racing that much? Gotta love how the women brought into the prison, you know, just all on this bus and just right in front of the men, you know, no real, and you know, you even have a couple of guards, like, having to push down one of the rowdy, I think it's one of the grease monkeys, you know, it's, yeah, that grease monkey, you know, the one who, the one who almost had a person, out, no, wait, none of them did, anyway. It's like, you know, yeah, these cops are apparently surprised that men who haven't seen women for a long time, seeing women, you know, and by the way, I've actually been, true story, I've been to a women's prison, that's exactly how they look. I, yeah, they, they get to wear makeup, they get to do their hair. It's incredible, it's really a lot freer than a men's prison, you know. It's, yeah, and even, you know, you, even that female guard wasn't completely unattractive, you know, it's just, yeah, it's that, that is really how it is, that's no lie. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Well, yeah, with the, also with the women, are they choosing to be navigators and, you know, could any of them vie for being drivers as well? Do they get to, you know, refuse to be, you know, navigator? I mean, like I say in the short review, we have no idea how these people are chosen to be. You know, there's like, oh, this guy represents that group. Yeah, but did he choose it? Did they choose him? Did they nominate him? Was there a brawl and, you know, the winner? or the loser, you know, had to race, you know, some people would really love to race, obviously, because they're sure they're, they're going to win those five times and get out. Some of them are going to be really against that idea, because they're sure they're going to die the first time. They'd rather ride out their time just to, you know, 
do the hard time. But we never see any of this because, I don't know, I guess Paul didn't realize how interesting those uh, scenes could be, you know. Those could be really compelling to watch, but no, we should rather have incomprehensible race scenes where you can barely tell who's in front and who's behind. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.